everyone, Pla Schneider here at DecoArt, and on today's Facebook Live, we're going to be talking about patio paint, which is a paint that's specifically designed for outdoor use. You can create a lot of fun things with it, like artwork, which we're going to be doing today. Of course, little pots and accessories for outdoor use. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and we're going to be creating this style of artwork here. And I know you've seen that, you know, a bunch of times. Um, it's just a very simple geometric, um, you know, work of art, but it's really bright and colorful and does add a pop of color wherever you put it. And although you've seen that, there's, there's a little twist that we're gonna be doing here, and I'm gonna share some techniques that make it kind of foolproof or at least more foolproof, a little bit easier to, uh, you know, create. So what you wanna do, because remember, this is going outside is you want to apply two coats of patio paint in cloud white. Now this already has one coat, but you know you would wanna apply two because that makes it more durable and better for uh, use outside. Also, we do have a giveaway, guys, which is an assortment of our patio paints in a bunch of fun colors. All you have to do is comment and tell us you know, what you may like to paint with patio paint. So back to the canvas. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about prep. You're gonna get a nice size, a uh, wide brush, and of course, the size of your canvas is completely up to you. And you're gonna apply two coats of cloud white in the patio paint to the front, and you wanna make sure to get the sides. Because remember, this is for outdoor use, and it may be rained on. You wanna make it as um, weather resistant as possible. Now, before you get started on your actual artwork, you want to turn it around. And again, with a medium to large size flat brush, you also want to paint the back. What you're doing with this process is completely sealing the canvas. So I'm just going to do part of it so you could see. Remember, you're doing the sides, you're doing the back. But then you want to, I'll just turn this this way so you can see. Actually paint the wood too. So think of it as once you're done with this piece, you don't need to seal it. Because this paint already uh, has sealing properties in it. And I'm sort of going underneath the wood frame there. Go, you know, as far as you can get in there. And you would do this to all four sides. Two coats for the most durability for outdoor use. You would do this all the way around, two coats. And you're also going to paint the entire back of the canvas. For those of you who are just joining us, right now we're just working on prepping the canvas for outdoor use. I am using patio paint in cloud white. I did paint the front. You wanna do two coats on the front, two coats on the sides, make sure you get the sides. Flip it over and you wanna paint the perimeter here, you know where the staples are, the actual wood frame and then the actual back of the canvas, but make sure to sort of get right under that canvas too. So once you're done and you have this all the way around, you're gonna wait for it to dry and you're gonna apply a second coat. Now you have your canvas totally ready for your artwork. This one here already has two coats. And we're going to move forward with this really fun and simple geometric design, which of course I know you've all seen before, but I do have some great tips for you to make it go as foolproof as possible. You're going to start with some masking tape. Uh, of course, the width is going to be where all of the um, white areas are. So you can choose, you know, the tape depending on the width that you would like. And we're going to go with the smaller one. You can totally plan this out if you want, you know, sketch it, or you can have some fun and sort of just go for it. But I suggest a good starting point 
is to sort of work on half of it at the same time because you want to paint and peel off the tape before that paint gets too dry. So let's just sort of go around there. And this one, of course, is going all the way across. And I am taping it down on the sides because it looks prettier. I'll just sort of turn this one a little bit. If you have the paint, you know, your design come to the sides as well. Of course, if you're gonna frame it, it doesn't matter, but if you're gonna put, you know, just your canvas up, I think it looks really pretty if you paint the sides too. So once you have that tape down, you want to press down firmly, make sure it's nice and firm, and that will avoid any uh, paint from bleeding underneath or seeping through. So there's my first uh, masking right there. Then I'm gonna come in and maybe go from here to here. And again, going down the side. It's not quite on the corner there, so I'm just gonna move it over a tad. There we go. And press down firmly. There we go. And we're gonna keep going. Maybe the next one is gonna be right about there. Press down nice and firm. And remember, down the side. Let me see what that looks like. Okay, just fold it back a little bit. There we go. And you can see this goes pretty fast. Maybe that one's gonna go right. And so far, I've created a bunch of triangles, but maybe just for fun, let's make one that is not a rectangle. We'll go from here to there. And see, it's a little bit short here. So you do wanna grab another little piece and make sure that you go down that side. There we go. And see that there, you wanna make sure that you cut that off. Because when you're painting, that will definitely show up. So I'm just gonna cut it right about there. And you can stop there or you can keep going and make your geometric shapes as small or large as you'd like. But I'm gonna add maybe one more right here. There we go. Now I could finish the entire canvas all the way down, but I suggest creating this in sections so that you don't give the paint a chance to dry with the tape, because when you go to pull it off, sometimes it will form a bridge and you may pull some of the paint off. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop there and we're gonna start painting. And again, just double checking that everything's okay and not off because that will affect your lines. Like that one there, it's just a little bit off. There we go. So double checking that it's pressed down very, very well is worth the time <laughs> to make sure the paint doesn't bleed through. Okay, so we're gonna select our colors. This one here, of course, I used warm colors plus gray skies. So I think for this one, we're gonna go with some cool colors. And let's start with this sweet pea. And you wanna give it a little shake. Squirt some out. And a flat brush works great for this type of artwork. And the key to this part is do not overload your brush. So after I load my brush, I'm gonna maybe pounce just a little bit off. And very important when it comes to painting, I am not ever gonna to paint towards the tape. I'm always gonna paint along the tape or away. So here we go. 
And remember, we're going to go down the side. Another thing I wanted to mention is it is you'll get much better results if you end up doing two thin coats instead of one thick coat. And again, I'm going away from this tape, not towards. And it's okay to go along the tape, just not ever towards. There we go. And that will need a second coat. Certain colors are a little bit more transparent compared to others. And maybe we'll do one more in this color. It's good to work with the same color in several sections. Your project will go a little bit faster. And remember, I'm going down the side. I can turn this a little bit. Smooth it out just a bit. And now we're going to move on to another color. This one is really pretty. This one is Blue Bahama. And remember, you're going to give it a little shake. But th this type of artwork, guys, again, it's super easy. It goes super fast but it adds such a nice pop of color to your outdoor space. Whether it's, you know, in uh, by the front area of your house or your backyard patio or by the pool, you may wanna select the colors according to your outdoor furniture. And again, I'm painting away from that tape. Another thing, see how this green paint is still a little bit wet? You wanna be careful to not bring your brush over because you will pick up that color. See, that goes pretty fast. So let's do this one in that same beautiful color, which is the Blue Bahama. And again, away or along that tape. And the sides. So for those of you just tuning in, we do have a giveaway, which is an assortment of the beautiful patio paints, a bunch of fun colors. If you can just comment and let us know what would you like to paint with patio paint? It's really fun to just like pick up some random terracotta pots or maybe something that you already have at home, but you wanna give it a little um, refresh or you know add some bright colors. So we're gonna move on to how about this really pretty honeydew? It's a very, very light green. So this will be somewhat of a monochromatic look. I already shook it up a little bit. Let's put this in the water. And again, I'm going either away or along that tape. And it is a good idea to have a contrast with your colors. Uh, this is substantially lighter than this green here. It just gives a little bit more entrance to your piece. Interest, not interest. <laughs> that would be nice, right? <laughs> and maybe let's add some gray. Gray skies. That's a very popular color. It's neutral, it goes with everything. And I think it makes the piece look a little bit more modern. So I'm going to turn it this way so you can see. And you don't need to be too specific with the type of brush you use. You just want to make sure that it's, you know, somewhat flat and not too small because that will give you smoother, a smoother brushstroke free look. Now we are gonna do a little reveal right after this part. And hopefully it looks very, very clean. Of course, you know, sometimes 
you can have mistakes and I will show you how to fix that. Let's see, which one could we start? You wanna lift up, um, not super slow, but also maybe not super fast. If you go super fast, um, the paint may splatter. Tearing a little bit. There we go. I'll lift it just a bit. You can see how clean the lines are so far. So, so far, so good. And I could leave this one here, but I'm choosing not to, just to make sure that we don't form a bridge here that's gonna dry. And then once it dries, there's a possibility of uh, lifting up that paint. Okay, one more on this side, guys. So that's what we have so far. And of course, uh, you could see that we would go in and do a second coat. Another nice idea is to actually create, you know, opposites. Um, if you can picture this like on your outdoor patio, maybe one canvas is the warmer colors and one is the coolers, or, you know, again, it's, it's up to you or whatever colors match your, your decor. So we're gonna keep going. And this is where you want to be very careful and get as close as you can to that edge there. Now, when I press down here, I'm going to concentrate on this side, not that side. Pressing down pretty firmly. And see, I could see a tiny flaw right there. I don't know if you could zoom in. And that's an easy fix. You could either just put a little piece of tape there and paint over it, or get a smaller brush and sort of just touch that up, which I will coming up. So we have that one down. And yes, we can create a bunch of triangles, but for interest, you know, it's fun to create a rectangle or another shape here and there. And again, press that down firmly. You can see how clean those lines were, and it's because I made it a point to really press that down. And for those of you, again, uh, joining us, we are using patio paint today. And what's really great about patio paint, it is weather resistant. You don't need a sealer with it. It's almost like a paint and sealer all in one. It's extremely durable for outdoor use. So what we're doing is creating a geometric uh, canvas, which again, I know you've seen this before, but I think we have some great tips for you. And the fact that this can go outside is super cool. Maybe right here, we wanna do another shape that is not a triangle. Sorry if that sounds like scratching a chalkboard. <laughs> I know some of you can't stand that sound. And again, down the side. And taking the extra time to do this, guys, is really going to save you a lot of uh, touch-up work. Okay, let's keep going. You can see how fast it's going. And I think it is fun to sort of design it as you go. Of course, you don't have to. You can draw it out, sketch it out on a piece of paper first, if you'd like. So we have an itty bitty triangle right there. That's kind of cute.
So remember, leave a comment. What would you like to refresh or paint with a Deco Arts patio paint? And you will be automatically entered to win a really nice assortment of a bunch of different colors. And right now is a super good time since summer is right around the corner, right? So that's looking good. I have that down. So I did want to mention, um, I put the brush in my water basin, right? You want to make sure that you absolutely remove as much water as possible. If you don't, it may seep or probably will seep underneath your tape. So I'm going to try to dry this as, as good as I can. In a, short amount of time here. Okay. Another tip is I would try to not be so symmetrical or so equal with your colors. If you pan over to this one, you could see, you know, there's more of the salmon color than the tiger lily or the sunshine. I just think it looks a little bit more interesting than if you try to make it very symmetrical or the same amount of colors everywhere. So I'm gonna go back into this honeydew and do quite a few with that color. And I'm going away or along my tape, never towards. If I do, you can call me out. <laughs> Sometimes I, I do when I'm not paying attention. There we go. And we'll turn it just a bit. Maybe I want another one right over here. Another thing is, it's okay if you have the same colors um, next to each other. Over here I do quite a bit with that salmon color. And it looks fine. It's a little more interesting. And of course, I'm gonna get that the sides. And this will be the last one in that honeydew color. A little string in there. I need just a little bit more. You know, this paint works on a variety of surfaces. Of course, it works on canvas. It works on wood, um, metal, ceramic, uh, plastic. If you, it works on most plastics, but not all plastics. That's why we say most plastics. But I do have a tip for you. Let's say you do have an outdoor, um, maybe you have a cute gnome or mushrooms, which are trending right now, or anything you may have that's plastic that you want to place outside, just sand it a little bit with maybe a 150 or 200 sandpaper, and that will give it enough texture for this paint to really adhere properly. And you do want to do, I would say, at least two coats for the most durability. Now we're going to pick another color. Let's go in with this sweet pea. It really does look like the color of sweet peas, doesn't it? I'm gonna turn it just a bit. And again, I know I'm sounding repetitive, but some people are just joining us. I am painting either alongside or away from the masking tape, or painter's tape, I should say. And the sides. And we will do that one there in the same color. And maybe one more gray and one more of the blue Bahama. And I did want to mention, you know, when you put your brushes, when you rinse them in water, be sure that when you go to use them again, especially when you're doing this type of technique, Dry them as well as you possibly can. 
because if they're saturated or a little bit wet, the paint will seep underneath. It's, just, it's more prone to, I should say. Okay. I think we are going to do this one in the Blue Bahamas. I'm going to turn it just a bit. Down or alongside, away from that tape. Isn't this color so pretty? This is one of my favorite colors. But in patio paint, we have an array. We have all of your bright colors, all the colors of the rainbow, pastels, brights, primaries, and a bunch of neutrals. It's a really nice color palette. And you can find them on shopdecoart.com. I can't really see. How does it look, Kelsey, on that side? Oh, it looks good. <laughs> well, it's blue. I'll take your word for it. Okay. <laughs> So I am going to move on and do that one in gray skies. And again, I'm rinsing my brush. So I'm going to pat it dry as well as I can. And this gray is beautiful. It's not too dark, not too light. I love this gray. It's called gray skies. And of course the sides. And we're gonna do a reveal in just a second. Uh, but I'm gonna show you, you know, you, you are gonna need to add a second coat. And I will show you that process. So we're gonna start removing some of this tape. And so far we have some really crisp clean lines there and sometimes the tape tears you can just remove that i'm going to turn it this way those lines are. So again, it is worth the, you know, extra time to make sure you press down that tape really, really firmly and you'll get, you know, very, very clean lines like this. Now I'm going to compare this one to the one that I did previously. And this one, of course, the one with the warm colors already has two coats and this one has one. So as you could see, you would want to go back and add second coat and I would wait for this to dry completely but just for the sake of showing you how I would you know add more coats is you're basically going to be remasking it and I know that seems a little difficult but it's fairly easy I'll just do a little section so you're just gonna Press it down. And of course, you would wait for the paint to be completely dry because I'm not going to be able to really press it down too firmly since this is not 100% dry. How long would that usually take for it to dry? Um, because I'm doing thin coats, I think you can do this in about 35 minutes or so. But I do want to paint um, at least a couple of colors here just so you can see. We will do the gray and the blue Bahama, the gray skies and the blue Bahama. OK, 
Okay, we're gonna start with that gray. And again, make sure your brush is as dry as possible. And remember, the gray is the one that had that tiny flaw right there. I don't know if you could see that. Right there. Okay, now we're gonna go into that blue Bahama. One of the things that I love about geometric canvases like this or geometric art is how fast you can create it. And I loved the twist that you could actually use this one outdoors because we are using patio paint. And remember, we protected the entire canvas first by adding two coats to the top, to the sides, to the back, and actually to the back of the canvas itself, making it weather resistant. Okay, we will go ahead and do a little reveal here. And remember, you want to lift the tape on the slower side, not super slow, but if you go too fast, you might get some paint splattering. Yeah, like right there. <laughs> Now, if I had a wipe, I would actually just wipe that um, before it dries. But let's say that I couldn't remove it. I would just get a brush and go in with the cloud white. Let's see, do we have any spots anywhere so I can show you? Anyhow, let's just pretend that there's a spot right there. And I would just touch it up, just go right in. That's one way, or you could also re-mask it off and tape uh, or paint the, the white areas. So now I'm gonna pop this up. So you could see how beautiful and how great the coverage is with just two coats. That's all you need is two coats. Okay guys, so I did wanna show you a couple more things. Uh, Crimson created this beautiful design. So of course you can go simple if you'd like, but this one, the process was, I can just sort of explain it to you quickly, is she first painted the background in what looks like, you know, a very beautiful abstract. Let that dry completely. So if you could picture that abstract part being the white part of this one here. And then she came in and masked it off and came in with the, that is Blue Bahama, I think. Yeah, with Blue Bahama. Or the colors are, you know, whatever colors you want. But I just wanted to show you that there's a bunch of different ways that you can uh, work with this paint and create your artwork. And always think about either before or after you create your artwork, you know, do some cute uh, terracotta pots or planters that match. Then you can create like, a, you know, a whole little collection and make your patio super colorful and fun. Okay, everyone, good luck. The winner will be announced on Monday. Again, all you had to do is leave a comment. Even if you're watching us, um, you know, on replay after we're live, you can go ahead and still leave a comment. Let us know what would you refresh? What would you paint with patio paint? Uh, good luck to everyone. And I hope you try it out. Do some fun stuff before the summer or during the summer. Okay, everyone, have a great day and see you next time. Bye.